Roll call, meeting order for March 20th, 2024. Roll call, please. Mr. Ferrari? Mr. Taliani? Here. Mr. Merva? Here. Dr. Lynch? Here. Mrs. Elkhorn? Here. Mr. Pissetto? Here. Mr. Sarver? Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone tonight. At this time, I'd like the members of the board to look over the minutes from the February 21st, 2024 regular meeting and the March 6th, 2024 special meeting. If there's no additions, I need a motion for approval. I'll make that motion. Second. Mr. Merva? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. P Mr. Pissetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. Under recognitions and comments from visitors this evening, uh, we're really happy to have the World Language and Fine Arts Division here tonight. Uh, Mrs. Kelly Leapart is going to be here uh, speaking. She teaches Spanish here in ELL. Um, and I know they were talking about how many minutes, but <laughs> you do a great job. <laughs> Mrs. Leapart. I'm Kelly Liebhart. I teach um, ELL and Spanish, like Mr. Sarver had noted. And I do have a presentation for you, if you don't mind giving one second to look that up. Um, our focus tonight is going to be on English language learners. It's been a very um, busy year, so I have lots of highlights for you. I will click on these books. It's never on the right side, is it? <laughs> okay. So as I noted, um, focus will be on English language learners. So we'll start off with our access exam. Um, we had access exams in February. We changed it up a little bit. Um, so for those of you who are unaware, our access exam is an English exam that's given to all of our English language learners. And that is four areas covered, listening, reading, speaking, and writing. Um, this year we had 97% of our students take the test itself, which was great, 101 out of 104 students. Um, we made some changes this year, which I think were very positive. Um, first, uh, Helen Lankaitis joined me. So in the past it had been just myself administering the test. Um, usually three to five days of examining, like mm. pretty much first through fifth hour of each day. Um, so it took a lot of time away from the classroom. Um, Helen offered to assist this year, which was very nice. So we kind of split the duties. Um, one of the complaints that we had had from the students is that the testing was very long. So instead of doing all four tests within one day, we decided to break it up into two different days. Day one, we did uh, listening and reading, and day two, we did speaking and writing. Another um, bonus on that is our speaking and writing we did in very small groups. Mm -hmm. So on day two, instead of having a larger group of 40-ish students, we had between 10 and 20 each in a room. I got a lot of positive feedback on that um, concept, and I'm hoping that the test results also are positive and we see more kids passing the exam. Um, we've been working hard to get our bilingual parent advisory committee going, which we also call the BPAP. Um, this is required of all schools that have a transitional bilingual edu education program like we do. So this group is made up of teachers, counselors, um, administrators, and parents of our students and community leaders. Um, the people that we have working with us outside of our school, um, we just have a couple at this moment, so we're trying to gain um, a larger group. Um, but the purpose of this is to support the education of our students, of our English language learners, and also to assist um, our parents in helping them grow when getting them involved in different uh, educational opportunities as well. One thing that we have done, which I think is great, is we had um, Mr. Fernie Ramirez come in. He is a bilingual um, psychologist. He's a clinical psychologist. 
and he came to us last year. He presented last year. We had about 12, I think, attendees. Um, this year he came back again. We had good feedback from the people who did come. Um, he came back and he did a presentation in Spanish and that was all on uh, video games, social media, and how that affects our students psychologically and emotionally. It was a great um, presentation. This year we had 31 people attend, which was great. Um, out of those, the same 12 from last year came back, which is wonderful. Um, I had another aunt and uncle of our student who were not here last year come. And we also had 17 students come from the IBCC ELL classes. And that was a big thanks to Helen Lankaitis, who also teaches ELL out at IVCC. So she had that connection. She was able to bring um, the students in, and they enjoyed the presentation itself. Um, Mr. Ramirez talked about electronics, social media, um, how our students are negatively affected about with it, um, bullying, suicide, how all of that is connected. Um, he really touched on, you know, we understand that these kids are going to have electronics. It's not something that we can um, remove fully, but he said limits. You know, parents, you need to take care of this in terms of limits. Um, after nine o'clock, you need to take these phones, tablets, et cetera, you know, limit it to a certain amount of time and make sure that you're involved. So there was a lot of involvement and a lot of discussion with the groups itself. It was, um, it was very good. Um, a new thing we did this year is we had an ELL strategies class. Um, so that was a new course that we started. Uh, we were seeing that we were having such a large influx of brand new students coming in, newcomers from different countries. Um, some of these students hadn't been in a school setting for years. Okay, So some of them were coming in with like uncertainty of the school culture, technology, class settings. Um, so it was very difficult for them to transition. So I wanted a little bit more time where I could have some more one-on-one -on -one with them or smaller class settings where I could help them and feel more comfortable with the transition itself. So I have 15 students this year with our ELL Strategies class. Um, students from all over, Mexico, Guatemala, Chile, Venezuela, and Vietnam. And their skills range from very, very, very limited English to, I have one student who's been here for four years, but he still kind of struggles. So majority of them um, are very limited. So what I've been doing with this class, um, they get two days of study hall. Every Wednesday, they will report to me with their grades. So they will go into power school, they will log all of their grades, the letter grade percentage. If they have a C or below, they will explain to me why and kind of what they need help with. That gives me like a trigger to know, okay, if this student needs help in this area, let's see what I can do from there. Um, during those times in study hall, um, either I will help them, give them different skills, um, strategies on how they can overcome whatever obstacle they are coming across. Um, also, the kids work together because a lot of them have the same classes and they also have the same struggles. So that's been nice to that, have that support there. In terms of curriculum, I've been focusing on really basic conversation skills, um, pronunciation, grammar. Um, this year we talked about and they learned how to write emails, the correct format of emails, um, writing letters, thank you cards, how to address envelopes. It's those things that I really thought were super basic and I, we kind of take for granted, but they were um, great lessons. Currently we are working on a food unit. Um, so I was teaching the kids, you know, basic food vocabulary. This is a, a food pyramid and this is what we need to have in our diet to be healthy. So we've been talking about making good, um, healthy decisions, and we've been doing some meal planning. So next Tuesday, I am taking um, the entire class to High V. so we're taking a little field trip. I had the students create two days of um, meal plans, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they had to include um, food from all groups of the pyramid. And what we were doing is once we got those um, meals created and everything was approved. Um, they put all of the ingredients into a spreadsheet and we broke it up into different like departments of a supermarket. Um, so we are going to take a look when we go to the store, they're going to go find all of the ingredients, all the items, they're going to log prices um, and we'll bring that back to school and they'll figure out what it costs um, to make these meals. And in addition, we'll probably do some um, 
price comparisons, maybe go online and see what it would cost at, you know, Walmart or, you know, see if we can do some sort of uh, a balancing comparison there too. So, um, One thing we also started is I've got the kids reading a chapter book in my ELL strategies class. Um, one thing that was kind of tough is finding books in English for them to read at their level. Um, I didn't want to go to the library and get children's books because it's just not age appropriate. Mm -hmm. So I was able to find these um, Blaine Ray little books or chapter books. There are some pictures in there, but it is limited. Um, it gives you basic vocabulary and grammar and it stays in your present tense. Um, there's a ton of repetition and so far so good. Mm -hmm. Some kids are, struggle a little bit with it because they're super limited, but even those who are limited have realized that they can comprehend and just the repetition has been helping to build their confidence. So that is our ELL strategies class. Um, ELL in general, so ELL stands for English Language Learners. So when I say ELL and we have, I have about 40 students in my ELL class and this is different from my ELL strategies. These students may be those students who are in my ELL strategies because if they are in ELL strategies, they are definitely in this class as well. Um, but I have some students who grew up in the Illinois Valley, born here, raised here, but they grew up in bilingual households. So I have some students who speak the language, write the language very well, um, but just wanted a little extra support. And then again, I have those ELL strategies kids who are very limited too. Um, I use a, a keystone curriculum, which I'll talk about in just a second, but um, typically in the fall and in the spring we'll read a different novel. Um, this fall we read The House on Mango Street by Sandra C Cisneros. Um, I'm fortunate to have a budget which allows me to use our Title III funds to get Spanish versions for those students who will struggle reading the English versions. So I had both of those versions available. Now, if you are unaware, Sandra Cisneros was um, raised in Chicago. She, was, she grew up in Chicago, I should say. Um, and this book talks about a lot of the neighborhood streets, events that kind of took place as she was growing up. So there were some similarities right there. So I said, you know what, let's go to Chicago and go see her house. So that was part of a field trip that we took. Um, we decided, since we're there, let's go to the Pilsen neighborhood and go to the National Mexican Art Museum. Um, there was a Dia de los Muertos exhibit and we had a bilingual um, tour guide and she gave us both English and Spanish talking about the holiday itself, the celebrations. Um, we saw all sorts of um, beautiful altars that are used to commemorate those who have passed in families. Um, we saw all sorts of sculpting, <laughs> paintwork. Um, this picture over here on the left was a wall that honored um, various Mexican female artists. And that was very cool. There's also some pictures included here of um, floral artwork. Now these floral artwork um, pieces were actually made of corn husks. <laughs> so these paper decorations are often used through different celebrations, parties, fiestas, um, et cetera. So that was a little focus and highlight at the museum. Students really enjoyed that. And of course, if we're out there, we need to eat. Um, so I found a Taqueria El Milagro, which you guys may be familiar with the brand itself. They make some wonderful tortillas um, and chips. So we ended up going over there and had wonderful, authentic food, Mexican food. The center over there you're gonna see is a steak taco. It was delicious. It was like seriously a big chunk of steak. If you're ever um, that direction, I would suggest to go. All right, this spring, um, what I am reading with the students um, is Night by Ellie Wiesel. So our Keystone curriculum, it's a textbook that gives you vocabulary, grammar, um, different stories that are fiction, nonfiction, et cetera. Um, so we were going through that. We learned a little bit about World War I and World War II, the history. So as we finish up with that, we have transitioned into um, this novel. It's an autobiography autobiographical account of the survival of Elie Wiesel from the Holocaust. So it was just yesterday that we went to the Holocaust Museum in Skokie. Mm. Um, one of the coolest things that this um, museum had to offer is that they had an application that you could download on your phone 
So as you're traveling through the museum, it would give you a different number and you could go to that number on the application. If you had headphones, um, you could listen to the experience and the history and you could do that in several languages. So that's wonderful. Um, Spanish, Ukrainian, I have another a Ukrainian student as well. Hmm. So everything else is written in English on the walls. So I thought that would be beneficial um, for my Spanish speaking students. Uh, they did get a lot of great information from the trip and we um, enjoyed ourselves and learned a lot. So it was good. Um, that's that. So just some highlights of ELL and what we've been up to. Hmm. Any questions? What's the range of languages that you currently have in the classroom? Is it primarily Spanish or do you have a mixture of other languages? Well, so it is primarily Spanish, which is good for me because I can communicate with those students. Um, I do have one Vietnamese student, one student who, who speaks Ukrainian, but his English is very strong. Um, and then some of my students who speak Spanish also have their own um, dialect, so which Spanish would be sometimes their second language. Mm -hmm. So um, just one, two, four, okay. four primarily, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we do not have any public comment this evening. Uh, tonight, uh, President's report, there's a couple things I'm going to be reporting on. Uh, first, uh, we had our annual superintendent evaluation. Um, over the last few months, and this, the summary of the evaluation, overall an excellent evaluation for Dr. Robleski with a comp composite score of 3.88 out of a four. Um, Dr. Robleski meets and exceeds in all his superintendent performance goals. Performance in all areas is very strong, uh, particularly finance, personal characteristics, Board of Education relationships, and leadership. Uh, LPHS's facilities, financial outlook, and educational programs have flourished under Dr. Robleski's leadership. He continues to be a positive and enthusiastic representative of the district and the community. Uh, due to Dr. Robleski's vision and effort, LPHS is in a very good position in all areas. Job well done. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It helps when you're surrounded by uh, a lot of good people as well. So, so thank you. Okay. Very good. Yep. Uh, the other thing I want to bring up this evening, um, kudos to our choir program. Yeah. I'll tell you, Mrs. Natalie Veruki and our students are very, very talented students. If you did not see La Miserelle last weekend, you really missed it. <laughs> I mean, because they, it was phenomenal. Yeah. You know, hats off to our students, hats off to, you know, Jeremy Stevens and our pit, pit orchestra. I mean, it was a collaborative you know, junction, and it was just, you know, if you were there, you know, you know, so hat, hats off to them because they did just a tremendous job. Yeah. yeah. Okay, under finance, I need a motion for approval for the bills for LaSalle Pre Township High School. So moved. Second. Mr. Merbeck? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I need a motion for approval. For the bills and payroll for the LP Area Career Center. So moved. Second. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Merva? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. Any motion of approval of the payroll report? So moved. Second. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Merva? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Dr. Sarver? Oh, Mr. Sarver. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I need a motion of approval for financial records as presented. So moved. Second. Mr. Merba? Yes. Mrs. Talian? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. Uh, under correspondence, we have TIF reimbursements this month. Uh, the city approved TIF 2, $66,711.94. City approved TIF 3, $11,087.69. And city approved TIF 4, $25,000 for a total TIF reimbursement of $102,799.63. Uh, 
uh, board committee reports, building and grounds committee. Mr. Ferrari. Uh, the building and grounds committee met uh, two days ago, Monday afternoon. Um, first, uh, first item that we covered was the uh, status of the sports complex phase two. Um, they're looking at mock-ups for the uh, outfield sign, uh, as well as some signage on the concession building uh, commemorating uh, UB Sarver, whom the field is going to be named after. Uh, the windows in the press box are all installed and soundproof. We're looking at replacing one of them with a window that can open so that uh, people in the press box can communicate with uh, the umpires and the people out on the field. Uh, that was something that was overlooked in the uh, design. Mm -hmm. um, they're also looking at some additional protective netting uh, to the sides of the bullpen to keep errant, errant baseballs out of the uh, stands in case uh, someone loses, loses control on a pitch out there. Uh, that was another thing that was not contemplated in the original design. Uh, the ribbon cutting and uh, dedication for the uh, sports complex phase two is scheduled to take place uh, around four o'clock on Monday, April 8th. And that will entail a, uh, a change in the schedule because uh, there was a, the next building and grounds committee meeting was originally scheduled to right about that same time. So that's going to be moved in lieu of the dedication. Uh, the Upcoming summer projects, uh, work is continuing. Um, the work on Howard, Howard Fellows Stadium is uh, out for bids. Uh, the uh, bids were awarded for the counseling office and PE slash coaches office renovations at our last meeting. And so they will be getting that started as soon as the school year ends. They're making arrangements already to make sure that the uh, Materials, desks, etc., are going to be moved out of those spaces uh, almost immediately as soon as the school year finishes. Other current projects: uh, the new scoreboard in the select gym is scheduled to be installed uh, the week of April 15th. Uh, phone, the new phone system installation going to take place on April 1st. Uh, the emergency replacement of the uh, failed water heater <coughs> in the boiler house uh, has been apparently completed. Uh, new heaters and circulating pump for leak valves, etc., have been installed. Um, tree removal has been completed on the uh, Creve Coeur Street property where uh, the LP Corral uh, once was. The, the house is scheduled for demolition uh, this Friday. Bohars will be taking the building down. Uh, the Kowalski projects in the Dolan building are continuing. Um, that is, uh, those are scheduled to be completed, including the early childhood playground by August 1st. We do have an action item on today's uh, schedule uh, for the uh, approval of the uh, playground slash learning lab over by, uh, by the Dolan building. That'll be uh, item 11.2 on our schedule today. Uh, we're also looking at the uh, purchase of a couple of handheld security wand type metal detectors. <coughs> That was approved by the uh, committee, and that is an action item number 11.8 on today's schedule. And that pretty much covers it. Okay, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Ferrer. Finance Committee, Mr. Merber. We met yesterday, and um, Gary hit on several things, but I'll still kind of go through what we talked about. So we're 
66.7% through the year. We've received 85.55% of our revenues, and we've expended 69.63% of our percent of our expenditures. And um, the administration's very hopeful that we won't need a budget amendment. I mean, we're running pretty close to budget at this point. So um, there is an action item tonight. We talked about the school fee uh, recommendation, which is in the packet, and uh, we recommend that. As, it, as it's presented. Also, we talked about the uh, City of Peru intergovernmental agreement regarding the usage of Washington Park for baseball, and we also recommend approval of that. Um, we also reviewed and discussed the Howard Fellows Stadium bid release. Um, also, the, uh, uh, the RFP for the copy machines has been delayed a little bit, so that'll be coming later. We discussed that. On a high level, we talked about staffing, fiscal year 2025 update, talked about certified and support staff, and, and I believe that's in our packet. Also, we approve that, recommend that, I should say. We uh, also discussed the, the uh, demolition of the, the property at 546 Creed Court, and uh, also the early childhood playground learning lab, and recommended that for approval also. Okay. That was our meeting. Any questions? Thank you, Ms. Burba. Administration reports, superintendent's report, Dr. Robleski. Thank you, Mr. Sarver. Um, just to uh, kind of add on to Mr. Murbaugh's, uh report regarding the staffing, um, we are recommending the addition of another full-time special education teacher that would be in our life skills program. Um, one of the things that we have to look at in our self-contained program are um, there, there are certain points if your enrollment exceeds a certain number that you, you, you need to make some adjustments in terms of staffing. And so um, we're expecting or projecting right now to have a life skills program of about 17 kids this fall. And if you're not familiar with the life skills program, I mean, these are um, uh, students that present a, a number of, of different levels of disabilities. And Ideally, you really don't want to have more than seven or eight kids um, in, in a life skills program. And so anytime you hit over 14, that kind of becomes the magic number to, to look at a, an addition to the staffing. So we had so a couple of years ago, we actually had two life skills instructors. And so based on enrollment trends, it dropped down. We're back up again. Um, so we're just looking then to bring our numbers back to, to, to where they were a, a couple of, uh, of years ago. And then we have some paraprofessional uh, positions to recommend. And these are also not new additions, but these are replacements for, uh, for paras over the last couple of years that we, that we need to replace. We're actually, we're actually down three paras right now. We're rec we have two recommendations for this evening. Um, and then we'll be looking for that third one in preparation for the coming uh, school year. So. Um, we're uh, pleased to be able to to present those to the board for uh, approval tonight. Um, I did put up, or Jen put together a packet, or printed a packet for you. Just wanted for you to have a copy of this. Um, it will be an open note test next month um, on the Illinois Comprehensive Literacy Plan. But the <laughs> state of Illinois is, is taking a lot of time to update the, the literacy uh, plan for the state. So our team right now, I've, I've asked Mrs. Cushing to, to work with Mrs. Honecker Ummel to, to begin to break this down and, and look at what impacts this would have for our, our program and to then be put together some recommendations. And they're taking the appropriate time uh, to be able to review this, but we wanted you to have a copy as well. Mm -hmm. So you um, would have ac access to, to know what the, the, the literacy um, plan uh, is for, for the state of Illinois. May 2nd. We have the, oh, the ROE is hosting the annual Excellence in Education um, celebration. Um, we're, we're excited. So this is an opportunity to um, not only celebrate our retirees, um, but it's also an opportunity. We have a nomination process here um, to be able to, to celebrate our, our staff members. And you know, I'm, I'm pleased to announce that, well, Mrs. Kelly Leapart uh, is one of our, our honorees. Natalie Veruki uh, is one of our honorees. Lori Turzen from Culinary Arts. Scott Leonard from our IT department were the, the LP staff members um, that were are, are being recognized. Mr. Menken from the ACC. We have um, Mrs. Robin uh, Partain in fire science as a teacher. And then uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Katie Shavokas, who yeah. works for Sharapti as the Programs of Studies, a College and Career Pathway Coordinator. Yeah. 
So this is this is just a, a wonderful opportunity to uh, to celebrate to celebrate our staff. And then our retirees: Meg Kowalczyk, John Beatty, Pam Engels, our choral accompanist, uh, and Cheryl Wilson, uh, our, our retiring staff members. Um, the last thing that I want I, I want to talk about, I actually did not make my my report, but I just wanted to give you an update: is we're we're continuing to make progress on our our our, our cell phone electronic device. Work group committee. Um, we had a uh, actually we read a really we had a great committee meeting today, and I think we're we kind of landed on a framework that we we, we think it, it has so, some possibilities, um, but there's there's still iterations that we need to go through in terms of communication with the staff, um, and then we'll have a board update, and we also want to process too how we're going to um, engage our, 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 our staff for, for input and, and um, uh, as well as in connect with our, with our business community for, for, the, for their input. But the committee has had several good meetings um, uh, thus far, and I, I feel like we had a kind of a breakthrough today in terms of some, uh, some direction uh, moving forward. That's all I have, unless you have questions. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Principal's report, Mrs. Cushing. you know our students will be very busy testing uh, in the upcoming weeks here. Um, tomorrow they will have the state science test uh, that they will be uh, conducting um, pretty much throughout the entire day so that will be for um, all of our juniors and then uh, as the report shares there um, on April 16th and 17th we'll be conducting the um, SAT suite of testing um, so you may notice that there will be lots of changes in the announcements that will be going out about our changes in the schedule here as well. Uh, in my report there, I shared about our summer school. Uh, we're able to offer 11 um, summer school positions, and um, I'm, I'm slowly but surely filling those, so I will have recommendations um, to you next month for sure on that. Um, and uh, a couple more exciting things um, than those, those business <coughs> things there. Uh, Fair Fair was yesterday, so I apologize for my typo. I noticed that after I turned it in. Um, it was not the 12th, but the 19th. Um, we had over 60 different businesses here. Lots of them brought multiple people with them. Even a dog um, <laughs> came uh, to our career fair, um, which the students loved. Uh, we had a great turnout. The kids loved it. They were all dressed up. Um, it was very fun to uh, uh, overhear them uh, worried about how to shake hands appropriately and how to introduce <laughs> themselves. And so uh, it, was, it was great uh, to, to hear their, their conversations as well as see them in action. Um, Celebrations that I included in there, we had past uh, celebration of high scholarship, but I wanted to share with you that last time I didn't have an exact number, we had 296 students that were honored that night, which mm -hmm. is incredible. Uh, we are definitely back up to our post-COVID uh, numbers there, and then some, I think. And um, a future celebration next week, um, if you would like to join us, we have high, or excuse me, we have uh, Honor Society celebration at 8 in the morning on Thursday the 28th uh, in Select Gym and we will be honoring our senior students not only do they have um, high scholarship uh, involved but they also have high character as well as involvement in the school so please feel free to join us to celebrate those seniors and with that that is all I have in my report any questions for me thank you right, if led director Mr. Hansen Good evening. Uh, so in your packet, you should have the winter update. Um, we put a wrap on the winter season. Um, just a few quick highlights from there. We did have 220 athletes participate this winter. Um, I felt that's pretty good, but we'll see, as I said in the fall, hopefully this data will help us uh, project or see how we're doing year after year. But uh, we, in eight sports, we had 220 athletes. Um, we did have 10 all-conference athletes, so that's, that's a bonus. Um, and individuals that performed very well. Um, we did have two regional championships, so our basketball team and our girls bowling team um, won the regional championship. So that kind of put our uh, lid on the, the winter season and now we're off and running in the spring. So we did open the <coughs> sports complex for softball and baseball. Um, rave reviews, it's, it's going very well. Everybody loves the facility. <coughs> Um, baseball is off to a 4-1 start, uh, softball 3-1, and one, so going very well. Last night we found out we did have two individuals advance to the indoor state track meet, so they'll be heading down this weekend to 
Illinois Wesleyan in performance, so that's Ellie Signs and um, you know, read my writing, Griffin Hammer. So um, they'll be down there this weekend competing against the best in the state. So, and then our girls' soccer team, they're playing, uh, they're probably finished by now, but they mm -hmm. played at Sycamore tonight. So, and they're undefeated still. So, on the athletic side, things are going well. Um, activities, Mr. Miller. He had a busy month as well. Obviously, the musical went very well. And <laughs> Mrs. Baruki did a great mm -hmm. job. But Mr. Miller also ran our first Cavs Day here on, uh, for the sophomores and juniors, and that went really, really well. He spoke very highly of the student leaders that he was able to train, and they had a really great two-day session over in the East Gym. And then lastly, um, our mock trial club, club finally got off the ground and went to Springfield last weekend and spent the weekend there and had, had a really good time. So that's athletics and activities. Mm -hmm. Any questions for me? Thank you, Mr. Right, Hanson. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Director of the ACC, Mr. Minkin. Good evening, everybody. Um, on, in front of your tables, I left you uh, some information uh, regarding something that occurred at a special meeting on Monday with the Superintendent's Board of Control for the ACC. It's just an explanation of um, a change to the way we would want to classify the mm -hmm. programs that we're teaching. Uh, the explanation in a nutshell uh, surrounds the way the state is now counting and holding us accountable, all schools accountable uh, for meeting nine specific standards um, in their receiving of federal Perkins funds and the state CTI matching funds. What it relied upon was uh, basically the aspect of work-based learning. So mm -hmm. uh, the seven programs you see listed in there, combined with two that already meet the definition, nursing and cosmetology, uh, all we did was change uh, them to being based on a semester naming where we take second semester and name them with the work-based learning counterpart for that particular class. The reason those seven were selected is because they've already been doing that since their inception. Uh, the cafe operates a public face with its corner cafe, um, as does the automotive shop and all the other ones listed on there. And so under the definition of what's called a school-based enterprise, which is what they have been and always have been, those students are doing work-based learning. So we will be able to count the hours that those kids are in there. Uh, that should theoretically then help each school that wants to report that back uh, to the state uh, with that. That's one of the nine measures we each school gets measured on is how many kids participate in work-based learning. So we'll be able to capture all of those with this. Didn't change the curriculum any, didn't cause any fees or anything like that. It just better described what really goes on in that class. So um, otherwise, uh, in your report, you saw we wanted to honor Chloe Hicks of Hall High School and Sydney Wilson of Ottawa, who are our students uh, of the month for this month. Um, also wanted to highlight the teachers reaching out and actually just connections that were made through students that had come here. Uh, we gained another community partner with Pilkington Glass out in Ottawa. Um, they reached out to us. Um, basically, Mrs. Ortega, who was a parent of an Ottawa student in our aviation program, is now uh, working there and in charge of some things and said, hey, we think we got a good match for some of your manufacturing classes. We'd love to have them out here to see what we do and potentially have them on. So we look forward to that, bolstering that relationship with the community amongst the other uh, entities we've had for the past couple of years. And then I also uh, wanted to highlight uh, Mr. Wersinski uh, having won uh, the edible car contest <laughs> out there for the faculty and our own uh, Dr. Lynch here, whose mm -hmm. car, I don't know, did you eat that finally? Or after no. <laughs> <laughs> it's what, 10 years yeah, old now maybe? <laughs> it's still, Twinkie. Uh, it's still rolling out there. Um, but I had a good time, they, uh, great competition, um, a lot of very, very finely designed edible cars that went through that, and it's just a nice thing to see uh, the support for that go through. Um, other than that, uh, the last thing you would see in there is that, uh, again, at the March meeting of the Board of Control, uh, there was a, a past motion to raise the tuition to 3000 a year. Uh, tuition hadn't been raised at the Career Center in over 20 years. Mm -hmm. couldn't remember the last time. Um, we are actually right in line with pretty much uh, regardless of where you're north or south in the state with the career centers, um, our career center operates solely on tuition. We don't charge any extra fees or assessments for maintenance. So we feel that this will do a good job in, in shoring up that um, real tight budget and giving it a little breathing room to be able to compensate for some of the things that need to be done. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Director of Communications, Mr. Baker. Hey, good evening, everyone. A um, few things as we're uh, kind of looking ahead to next year as we're talking about 
the new scoreboard in the, in the gym, looking at all the new facilities at the sports complex. Uh, Dr. Obleski, Mr. Hans, and I are starting to uh, kind of revisit what our kind of athletic activity sponsorship program needs to look like as we, as we move forward. We've been reaching out to some other schools with some similar facilities to kind of see how they handle that and how they connect with their business partners and sponsors mm -hmm. and those sorts of things. So I want to make sure we kind of are ready to go uh, when those new uh, facilities are fully up and running and all the new equipment's in the building. Um, on the musical side, since I help kind of oversee the online ticket sales portion of all of that, uh, I can let you know we just a little shy of 1,400 people came out to view Les Miserables over uh, the weekend, uh, so that's pretty great. Um, and then uh, coming up tomorrow night, uh, the LP Foundation Board will meet, um, and the big takeaway, I guess, or keep in mind is as of today, we're one month away from LP Foundation Trivia Night, so that'll be out at Oak Ridge around 7 o'clock on April 20th. So. Uh, start making plans to get your table together and uh, <laughs> come out and compete or have some fun and uh, do the whole thing. Uh, that's all, unless you have any questions. No, thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, on the new business. 11.1, made a motion for approval of the ITSA renewal for the 2024-2025 school year. So moved. moved. Mr. Pesetto? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Italiani? Yes. Mr. Merkley? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. 11.2, uh, any emotional approval to hire Vernon Jones, sports construction, St. Louis, Missouri, to construct the early childhood playground slash learning lab via the TIPS Purchase Cooperative for $318,882. So moved. Second. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I right, need a motion for approval of the 2024 2025 school fees. So moved. Second. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? <coughs> yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. 11.4, I need a motion of approval for intergovernmental agreement with the City of Peru for the use of Washington Park. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Murba? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. 11.5, any motion of approval for the following building permit applications. A, Dolan Building, Elevator, Modernization, Health Life Safety Amendment number 10. B, Dolan Building, Elevator, Modernization, Health Life Safety Amendment number 11. C, Main Building, Counseling Office Renovation, Health Life Safety Amendment number 85. D, Main Building, Counseling Office Renovation, Ceiling Replacement, Health Life Safety Amendment number 86. And E, Main Building, P Office Renovation. So moved. Second. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Ms. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Pacetto? Mr. Pacetto? Yes. <laughs> 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 yes. 11.6, the emotional approval of the following occupancy uh, permit applications. A, sports complex concession and soccer buildings, and B, sports complex baseball and softball fields. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. 11.7, and the emotional approval. For your emergency health life safety amendment resolution replacing the main building water heater. So moved. Second. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. 11.8, any motion of approval to purchase two handheld security wand metal detectors. So moved. Second. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mr. Murba? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Mr. Sarver? Yes. 11.9, a motion approval of the following appointments. A, Mrs. Heather Sherman, food service production and cashier, effective February 5th, 2024, replacing Mrs. Beth Milby, and B, Mr. Scott Blessman, assistant boys track coach, effective the 2023-2024 school year, Replaces Mr. David Spudick. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Murba? Yes. Mr. Pacetto? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. 
Uh, 11.10, a motion of approval to hire the following administrative positions for the 2024-2025 school year. A, Mr. Chris Gibson, Associate Principal for Teaching and Learning. B, Ms. Kate Lance, Associate Principal for School Safety. C, Mr. Jason Miller, Dean of Students, Activity Director. And D, Mr. Steve Hansen, Activity uh, Athletic Director. So moved. Second. Mrs. Talian? Yes. Mr. Passetto? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Merba? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. 11.11, any emotional approval of the following probationary certified staff reappointments for the 2024-2025 school year as presented? So moved. Second. Mr. Merba? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Passetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. 11.12, the emotion of approval of the following staff reductions in force for the 2024-2025 school year as presented. So moved. Second. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Merba? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Prestetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. 11.13, any motion of approval of staffing recommendations based on the 2024-2025 student enrollment. So moved. Second. <clears throat> Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mr. Merba? Yes. Dr. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Passetto? Yes. Mr. Sarver? Yes. I need a motion to go into executive closed session for the purpose of A, discussion of the minutes of the meetings lawfully closed under the Open Meeting Act, whether for purpose of approval by the body of the minutes or semi annual review of the minutes. B, appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employee. C, collective bargaining matters between the public body and its employees or the representatives or deliberations concerning salary schedules to one or more classes of employees. And D, imminent pending litigation with open session and possible action items to follow. Second. Mr. Passetto? Yes. Mr. Mirba? Yes. Mr. Ferrari? Yes. Mrs. Taliani? Yes. Dr. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Alcorn? Yes. Mr. Parker? Yes. 